Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Monday, May 8th, 2017. And I'm a bit tired today, but that's okay. Because <laughs> we're just doing 3D art and blender. So uh, what we were working on last time was I was kind of looking at this and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, but I don't really know how it would work out. Um, then we saw this. And... Um, think this would be a pretty good example of the kind of art style that I'd be interested in making the decorations, not the tiles and stuff like that, uh, but the decorations around the tiles. Have it be kind of like this sort of thing as the environment around it and have like the plate for each level drop in or somehow not in the demo, it'd just be a level swap, but uh, in uh, in the future game, it could be like even a uh, streaming level load where you like, you know. Yeah, so you basically. Uh... <clears throat> How would I describe it? Um, it would look like the level's kind of transitioning in there. Um, I think I could do it with level streaming. I could be wrong enough. Um, so like each level would be a plate, like a kind of um, abstract rectangle made out of voxel decorations, uh, voxel style decorations, um, and have that be uh, each level. So as you load them in and out, and the menu can uh, kind of be in this sort of room. And kind of have this sort of style with it. So for that, we need to turn on a blender. <clears throat> and we need to load up our previous project, which I don't have my recent files open, but that's okay. There we are. So this was the uh, one we had last time. Uh, oh, wait. And the reason why I wanted this is because um, I know this makes my computer a bit slow. Um, but yeah, it's uh, 
kind of the... I am very tired today, did I mention that? Um, yeah, so it would be kind of the um, shading style I'd want. Um, I'm going to change these around a little bit, so we're going to delete this. And we're probably going to start with something a bit larger, so we'll make a new cube. Because if it's, we start larger, then it's going to look larger at distance, but it'll also mean we can uh, use less light map resolution uh, to save a bit of performance. Uh, da, da, da. Then have this be uh, 10 meters, let's say, so that'll be twice the size. Uh, eight times the volume. Uh, and then we have this be at five meters, five meters, five meters. So that way the bottom right corner aligns perfectly with zero, zero, zero. Then we do reset location. Let's do reset scale as well. And then we're going to do a bevel. Oh, sorry. We're going to go into edit mode, select all the faces, then do a bevel. Fine. Oh, there we are. Bingo. Okay. Um, go 200. It looks like it's going to be roughly that. Looks like it's trying to do roughly uh, uh, centimeters. So it should be um, two there, two there, and six in the middle there. Uh, yep. <clears throat> And then we're going to uh, save that there. And then we're going to uh, do save that one there. Wasn't sure if I saved the first time, so let's do it again. Uh, to um, cut face. Let's do three cut face. We're gonna do a nice little box select. No. There we are. We're going to uh, delete faces. Okay. I found out that, uh, well, for sure that. Uh, I kind of figured it would do this, but just in case, uh, that light mass would in fact, um, uh, what's the word, would in fact um, work on, uh, bleh, um, light mass would in fact work on one side that uh, things doesn't need to be sealed, which is good. So we are going to take this edge here, just do all three these edges. We're going to do subdivide. We just need one subdivision because we only need one extra vertex, which we're going to have go to zero, zero, zero. Oh, sorry, zero, zero, negative two. Positive two? Okay. Then we're going to grab these two. Some people may actually know what I'm doing right now. Global. It's Ten meters. Oh, was it centimeters? Oh. Yeah, and Z is zero. Dura says not me. Okay, well, I'll show you in a second. 10 meters. 10 meters. Uh, zero, 10 meters. And then grab you two here. J. Z 
So now we want we can then have this pattern repeat as we want, which will have that sort of uh, look to it. Which I'd prefer to have a bit more ambient occlusion, but what can you say? Probably in that case, what we'd want to do is we want to make these go back a little bit further. So let's delete that. <sighs> so we want to have this be good, but we want, uh, actually, probably want this to be at Z equals um, two. And then we'll do reset location there. And we'll have these four come out. So in edit mode, grab these four here. And instead of being, uh, that will be negative. Let's try negative three, see if that's enough. overloading at this that's not good oh that's good again um oh it's done because it's done with patch trace uh if i move my camera i'll probably get overloaded again um hopefully that'll be enough uh enough um variance there Sorry if I'm losing frames or stuff like that, but. Yeah. Kind of difficult because I have, you know, I, I, I have one computer to do both these things, right? It's not like I have Ryan set up where he can, uh, Too. Cool. Okay, now let's go back to uh, it's here so I don't lose much encoding. Anyway, so let's delete that. Okay. Now we need to use unwrap it. So we need to get a second blender window. You do that by holding shift and you see this little tab here. Oh no, you can't because my mob comes in the way. Okay, so you see this little tab here? Right there. Um, that is blender's um, interface split widget. If you hold it down, you can actually split the image. If you bring it back, you can uh, you see a little arrow there, make it collapse back in. But if you hold shift when you do that, it'll pop out a new window. In this case, it appeared in my fourth monitor. Um, that is a copy of the panel you uh, did that had the tab. Um, right. So now I have two monitors on this one over here. I'm going to uh, flip it to uh, unwrap. Uh, right. So let's close this there. Let's go into there. Let's go in here. And uh, I'm thinking, how do I want to do this?
So we're going to try to do it like this. The, the problem that I'm looking at right now is that um, you're going to end up having some stretching of some sort, I think. Unless this just happens to unwrap perfectly that way, we'll see. Um, we'll mark seams here. So Blender will know to make a cut there, 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 and there. So when I tell it to unwrap, when I tell it to unwrap, there we are. Oh, looks like it did it without uh, stretching anything. It kind of unfolds where these two cut lines here allow it to spread out, right? So there, 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 there corresponds to there, 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 and there. And then I was hoping these two would end up not stretched, and it looks like they're fine. Okay, so now when we have this, uh, if we do a light map, each of these pixels will take up this amount of pixel over here. Like reverse origami, pretty much. It's pretty much that. Um... Yeah, you're, you're trying to make a uh, 3D op, well, origami. The, it's like the little uh, paper cubes and stuff like that you made in elementary school. So, yeah. Or ever try to make a paper cup? A little trick you can learn and actually hold water one second. Let's see if I remember how to do this. So here's uh, Oops. Uh, uh. Let's see if I can do this. My lower third, my about. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a sailor hat, yeah. Uh, let me pull it over like this. And then you. Make a little mark here. Tear off. A little trick you can show a kid and they'll be impressed. Alternatively, you can use a pair of scissors, which I actually have one sitting over there. Um, there we are. Then you, uh, so now you have a roughly square piece of paper that's folded on diagonal. Um, if you then take these two unfold over here and then flip it out. Um, then they make a... Uh, a little cup here. And depending on the paper you use, I've actually made it where it was watertight. So let's... Let's be a little dangerous right now and try making Warte. See if Warte. Yep. No, it doesn't last that long, so I go pour it out. So one second. And I'm back. 
And uh, yeah, it actually is Watertight for a <laughs> the Me Shows Cup, yeah. Um, it actually is Watertight for a few minutes as well, uh, depending on the type of paper, paper you use. I remember being back in elementary school, I think it was in grade three, and I uh, did that for uh, someone needed to drink something of, uh, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I know I can do, grab a piece of paper, I made that cup really quickly, and they were able to drink out of it. Um, which, in grade three, your classmates lose their crap, right? <laughs> They're like, what, you can make a cup out of paper, right? Um, yeah, cute little thing. I think after like four minutes it uh, started leaking, but depends on the paper you use. Like, probably better if you use, um, uh, like, cardstock or something, but I was just uh, plain printer paper. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that interesting topic out of the way. We now have this here. Not the most efficient use of uh, UV space, but that's okay. <sighs> so now we have this. We're going to save it. Then we're going to um, do another save as. And we're going to do uh, cross stream maybe. So for cross streams, we need uh, 250 by 250. Uh, by 250. Well, height doesn't actually matter. Um, so we're going to uh, do a bunch of duplications on this. So, um, uh, what was duplicating at again? I don't think I need to, uh, sorry, I don't think there's a command for this directly. I think last time I had to do a Python script uh, for that. Yeah, Python script. Yeah, that's not fun. Okay, so we're gonna do it by hand. So, uh, duplicate, um, 10, 0, 0, 10 meters, 0, 0. Uh, there we are. Now, one problem you'll note is that, uh, yeah, these vertices are not gonna be welded, so you can create a hole that way. I'm first off. I'm gonna turn on back face or turn off back face calling um, while we're editing. I'm gonna do here. Grab duplicate. Uh, Twenty meters. Zero zero. So after we're done, we're gonna to have to then start welding these things together. I'm wondering if this is a good idea. Or if we want to make it bigger. Like, more narrow gap. So there's there's a trade-off. Um, you want to have uniform amount of texture space for each, um, each face. Uh, otherwise, you get weird stretching issues. Um, <clears throat> but then I also have the problem of uh, wanting to make them the faces close enough uh, to uh, make it um, do interesting lighting, and also still give it a beveled effect, right? Um, yeah, we'll leave it like this. Why not? And yes, I know why not is not one of the best things you can say. And now we have this, we can then do box select. OK. 
Okay. So now you'll look at... Oh, one thing we do is, as well. Um, go into vertex mode here, and we'll do uh, merge... Uh, actually, it's a... What's it? Vertex? I think it's a vertex menu. Okay. Uh, vertex... Um, do remove doubles, remove 36. Uh, so uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 36. So I removed all of them. Okay. When you have models this size, it makes it easy to do math. But as you see over here, they're all occupying the same texture space that won't work for light mapping, but they're all separate islands. So now we can do, uh, as we said last time, uh, pack islands. There we are. And now this will work. Um, so that is uh, 10. So I have, let's say, one, two there, and then one, half, two, so four. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be better if we do two rows or not. Let's try. Huh, okay. Uh, so we're going to then duplicate up. Zero, zero, ten meters. Then we're gonna grab all of these. We're gonna then do remove doubles. Uh, remove three one vertices, okay. So that should be these line here. So one, two, three, four, five. Why thirty one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I guess I can make it sense, okay. Um I mean it doesn't yeah. Anyway. So now we go back in here. Let's try do pack allens again. And that seems to be wasting a little bit less space. Um, yeah. Because before it was that much leftover space, and then after, uh, it's that little bit there. So about half there, half there, half there, half there, and, um, uh, about one there, let's say. So three waste versus, um, three waste out of 20 versus, um, four waste out of 10. So we're getting a bit better. Um, let's try three rows. Oh, where is the doubles? Okay, good. Uh, now duplicate again. Zero, zero, ten meters. Doubles. 62 makes sense because we have twice as many now. Uh, now we're going to go back in here and do uh, the pack islands. Um, I don't think that saved us any. But I also don't think it cost us really any either. Looks to be about as efficient on both. And we don't have to worry much about um, tiles high because I don't need to make it a specific height. Uh, it could be whatever makes sense. The length and width is what's going to matter most, though. Because this is going to be, you know, cross streams is going to fit roughly around, like, a box, like, about 
about that big is what cross stream is going to end up being. Hey, Mir, welcome to the chat. Oh, Mir, it's... It's... Oh... So Mir said, oh, sorry for being late. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a drop-in thing. Um, yeah... Some people may be seeing what I'm seeing. Um, shoot. Yeah, we won't be able to fit any more that side. Uh huh. So what we need, I was hoping to have them kind of connect perfectly, but we can just put a uh, cube <laughs> there. When in doubt, hide with a cube. Um. Except it's not exactly going to be a voxel art style. Gotta try and make it something kind of like, uh, feel something kind of like this, as I said earlier, right? But the insides are going to be like this. Although a bit of a bevel on the, uh, on the voxels. As a matter of fact, it might even be a bevel on these. Can't tell if it's a bevel or a stroke. Looks like a stroke. Okay. So this is here. Right. So this is gonna be 250 wide. Or wait, no, that's not 250 wide. It's 10. Uh oh. How much is it again? Sixty four times three hundred divided by a hundred of course because it's meters. So one ninety two meters. Oh okay. So ten times ten is gonna be hundred. I need two of these wide. And I'll be slightly larger than uh, cross streams. Unless I have three wide. Hmm. Yeah, I could do three wide. Okay. Um, so let's see here. So uh, I would need um, something roughly four up so. Twenty-four divided by three. Eight. So eight times three. It's Twenty-four per side. Uh, so twenty-four, 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 twenty-four. That's uh, about a hundred. Um, so that's not bad for draw calls. Right now, what we're, we're trying to do is try to make the background fit in a real engine and optimize for both draw calls, which means we want to make as many things together as possible, and texture space, which means we end uh, culling, which means we want to make things as separate as possible. <laughs> so, um, where's your calculus now? They say. Um, uh, yeah, so. Uh, typically, an engine like Unreal Engine can easily handle. Probably about 5,000, 6,000 draw calls before it starts belching a little bit. Um, when you're starting to go into really highly optimized games, like, um, well, like in Real Engine, if you actually took the time to optimize it, um, as well as like Assassin's Creed and stuff like that. Um, I was going to say Unity, but I'm like, that's probably not a good example. <laughs> um, 
Uh, but yeah, when you start going to that, you're talking about like the 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 draw calls. Um, we have about 4,000 off the bat from our um, our tile period, although we can uh, batch some of those together. <sighs> if we somehow, um, in the future, I mean, yeah. So in the future, if our tiles are static, not, um, not dynamic, so um, they can't be turned on or off. Like on a on King's Court, we'd be kind of screwed. Um, we wouldn't be able to disable any of them or uh, make any of them static because they all can disappear. Uh, but if we are on, uh, let's say, cross streams, the vast majority of tiles on cross streams will never change. They will just stay as they are. Um, at editor time, I can turn them on and off and stuff like that. But in game. It will be, um, some of them can be disabled on or off, like if I want to make some drawbridge or something like that, or like a wall that drops and one that turns on or off. Um, but the vast majority of them will be tiles that will always be valid forever, right? Uh, in those cases, I would physically be able to um, uh, create something that would look for tiles that are set to um, static. Uh, and in editor time, probably, remove their mesh and replace it with a, um, because that'd be editor time, because we're going to use stack lighting, um, and replace it with a instant stack mesh <clears throat> that would be, uh, that group of tiles. So if you take two, five, eight, ten, twenty tiles, that are all nearby each other, um, you can batch them together into one, and that would be the um, uh, all the same draw call. Uh, right. That would be a bit extra work, uh, but it would save if you if you're draw call limited. If you're not draw call limited, if you only have like 100 draw calls and you're not doing v and you're like not doing VR, you're doing a desktop game. You're laughing, right? That's way more. <laughs> Like, that's not what's going to be eating up your uh, overhead. Uh, when you start getting to 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, then you're going to start worrying. If you're going to get into tens of thousands, then you're at your limit, right? Um, one nice thing about our camera, though, is that it can't really ever look up. So we're kind of forcing it to look at a square in front of us. Um, for cutscenes, it might matter a little bit. But uh, other than cutscenes, occlusion culling will... Uh, sorry, occlusion culling and full... Uh, Frustum calling. Occlusion calling and frustum calling will remove um, a lot of the tiles from our render so we, they don't count as draw calls because they're not in the. The camera can't see them, they don't get drawn, right? Um, and that saves them draw calls that way. Uh, yeah. Get the idea. So anyway, about this, now we have one chunk here. Um, we're gonna keep going up a little bit. So here we are. Okay, so this means I could probably do this. There we are, okay. Uh, so shift, duplicate. Meters, and then we'll do whatever shift duplicate zero, zero, 010 meters. So now we're gonna try to have this be our. Oops, we'll do a merge. What? Not merge. Um, what? What? No! Okay, well. I couldn't tell if it did uh, a duplicate in place, or if it undid the move, like a, if it undid the duplicate, or if it undid the move after the duplicate. So I could have had two overlapping each other, which means I would have had a bit of Z fighting, even though they're be the same material. And I would also have um, extra polygons being drawn. Actually, it wouldn't be the same because uh, light mass would probably freak out. Um, anyway, so, uh... Oh, what the... So 
that's why I did the delete again to make sure that I wasn't leaving just something there. Um, so that's now five. So let's go here and uh... you know what? Let's just do over here. There, that's the button I wanted. Uh huh. Now over here, we can then uh, check our islands. So uh, pack islands. Uh, not very efficient. That being said, we now have five rows of it, so it might even be slightly more efficient, but it's not... We're probably not saving anything, we actually be losing a little bit, but whatever. Um, actually, let's see over here, so... Uh, so let's see what this polygon's verdict is. So, um, at 256, so that's about four pixels at a 256 by 256 resolution. So this has about eight pixels of light, mass, uh, light map resolution. Actually, not too bad. So if we do a 512 by 512, it will probably have like eight. That's good. Okay. Uh, so we'll do a save there, and now we're going to, um, in object mode, grab this one object, again save, and then we'll go into export, FBX, um, just selected objects, um, and now I'm going to find my uh, content folder. There we are. Meshes, uh, we'll do level cross streams. Um, and it's gonna be 10 by five. Container, 10 by five. Um, Five meter or ten meter. Explore FBX. Now we're going to open up uh, Visual Studio 2017, which I'm gonna switch to 2015 at some point. I have them both installed, but I haven't installed the plugins yet, and I haven't flipped over Unreal Engine yet, so we're just using it like this for now. Now we need to build this to get into our game. <sighs> so why I'm frowning is because I have 2015 and 2017 installed. I'm using it for two different projects. When I sign into both, it moves the preferences across. I want, however, one of them to be dark theme, one of them to be blue theme. So as soon as I do a switch, it switches the other one, right? I'm weird, apparently. Yeah, one we'll port. Uh. Import. Sure, whatever. Um, okay, now we're gonna go into cross streams. So we're gonna then put the meshes here. Level cross streams. Import this here, and we're gonna have this be at um, uh, so I want to be 300 by 300. So, uh, uh, negative 150. Ah, 
that is hard, folks. Um, they have 150 meters. And then they have 150 meters. Well, it's B0, sure, why not? So negative 5,000, this will be positive 5,000. I'll grab, oops, three of these. Duplicate up, um, 5,000, and then grab the six of these, uh, and then duplicate up 10,000. Actually, I can't do that. So you there will be 10,000, and you there will be 15,000. So this would be um, gold team side to the left. Let's see if you can see it. Nope, can't see it. Yeah, it reminds you of an anechoic chamber, yeah. Actually, look at the stat unit. <sighs> you can see our frame times jump, so, you know, when you see all these draw calls, holy crap! Uh, but if you're only seeing these draw calls, this is hurt so bad. Compared to over here, over here, it actually doesn't really do anything at all. Our GPU time jumps but a millisecond. Actually, no, less than that. So it goes from uh, 2.8 to about 3.2, so it jumps about four tenths of a, of a millisecond. Um, yeah. Now let's see here. Oh, I'm stupid. Shoot. That won't work, but it's not too bad. But we need to go back into Blender because I created the light map UV channels on channel zero, not channel one. So Unreal, Unreal Engine doesn't know what to do with it. Okay. Uh huh. So we go into edit mode here. Let's see over here. Let's see we map there. Oops. Let's go into here and let's go into our. Um, this here, do that there, do that zero. I think I just copied it.
Did you copy it? Okay then, well, yeah. I go into Blender, sorry. Let me do another export. Oh, we need to do an object mode, right? Export a BX. Export a BX and do another save. Now Unreal Engine should pick it up. Re-import. Go in here. And expand this view. Uh, don't generate light map UVs. Source light map channel. I think it's one and one. Light map resolution gram set default to 512. Do save, and then we're gonna do another re-import. Then there save. That should be good. So now if we go into light map UV presentation mode -y thingy. Then we are seeing um, fairly low density, apparently, but I mean, it, it's definitely light mapped. Not as much as these guys here, but you know, that's okay because it's all way <laughs> all the way over there, right? Matter of fact, it actually might be even too high resolution. Maybe we'll get away with uh, 256 at this at this range. Let's try this again. So 256. Uh, I think a save will work for that. I don't think it's import. Yeah. So would this be enough resolution for our light maps? Uh, we shall see. Seeing some harsh seams there, but it doesn't look like it's actually stretching or anything. It looks like it's just having some seams. Um, save there. Then for each of the, um, okay, it's taking a while. Hopefully they didn't crash in real engine right now. Oh, no, it's good, okay. So now in here we're going to, uh, for lighting. Shadow two sided. These two sided lighting. Now let's try a build for lighting. That's good. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> that was a weird glitch there. Okay, that was my goofy moment of the day. Hope you caught it. Cause I mean, it's not like it's going on YouTube or anything. <laughs> um, I'm not expecting it to go very good because I didn't really set the laying scene for this, but um, yeah. I'm still curious what it'll end up doing. <coughs> Excuse me. 
see me. So even though it's only a 512, we do have quite a few of them. We have uh, about 12 of them. Yeah, so far. Um, but those tend to complete pretty quickly, especially since we have multiple cores. Looks like Lightmass is using five threads right now. Uh, but we also have a bunch of tiles too. And I'm not sure what I set the tiles to. What are the tiles set to? Oh, 64 by 64, that's fine then. Good, good. I'm making the individual box flicker a different color and depending on one another at different rates. May do seizures. Um, yeah, so epilepsy is a big problem. <laughs> um, it was actually funny, um, but there was a time when um, we were working on some graphics for uh, the Peace Perspective website and uh, we were trying to do something that was more, you know, more noticeable for the live thing. Um, and we were trying to side on it and Ryan was being like, you need to be more noticeable or whatever. And like, so maybe you should flicker faster or whatever. And I'm like, I'm going at the maximum I can until we hit the epilepsy range of, uh, I think it's two hertz to 30 hertz. Um, there's a two to 60. I think it's two to 30. Um, for when we we're doing, because it was a, a red light on a ba blue background, which is not very good, right? Um, so uh, he didn't know that, of course, when I explained, yeah, that could trigger seizures. So like, never mind then. <laughs> but it was uh, funny how a lot of these user interface issues can end up being like health issues. Um, and no, you know, nothing wrong with that. It's just once you know, you know, right? Yeah, it wasn't that I didn't want to do it, it was that if we continue in this path, it could end up causing some serious health issues. So you kind of see what I'm trying to go for. Um, this BSP underneath here is actually going to probably go away, or um, be shrunk significantly. So cut it off so around here. Because what I want is I want the level to be on like a plate that, even if it doesn't move, looks like it moves, right? Uh, unless I make it in Blender again. Um, Funny thing is, I was talking about doing chessboard first, and yet, here we are. And the idea is, you're not actually going to be able to see this for um, most situations, but yeah. So I kind of want to have this be a box that surrounds it, again, kind of like this here. Maybe some abstract things floating around in it, but have a plate in the middle with the tiles on top um, be the actual play area. Um, yeah. So let's see here. So um, 
8 times 300 divided by 100. So on chessboard level, we can use the same thing, but we only can use, um, well, we need 24 meters, um, and there's, uh, um, we need 24 meters, and there's 52 a side. Um, that said, we might be able to, or we might want to uh, keep using the uh, cross stream size one to make it look like it's the same um it's the same virtual space for all levels just with a different plate in the middle um and some plates will be small some plates will be big right um Anyway, so uh, yeah, let's uh, keep going for that. Um, save, close, save. I mean, probably in the fade in, fade out, it wouldn't be uh, like the, the sweep in or whatever. Probably wouldn't have the tiles on it. Um, let's get to get some way to do it with level streaming. Or maybe we just have the level load, um, do a push press volume, fade to black, and come back. Um, Trying to think of how I'd do it so it'd be uh, interesting. Ideally, the menu would just kind of like go through a roof and then up comes the uh, the level and then you play the level as it arrives. Um, yeah. You know what, I think I'm going to make it a short stream today. So, uh... I guess that's going to be it for today, so uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time, and we're going to keep working on this. Have a good one.